In this video, we'll be adding and subtracting decimals. The I can statement is I can add and subtract positive and negative decimals. You've previously learned how to add positive decimals. Now we're going to look at including negative decimals. And before we do that, we're going to review our integer rules. So here, a positive plus a positive is still positive and I'm going to add. A negative plus negative is negative and I am also going to add. Now a positive plus a negative or a negative plus a positive, I'm going to use the sign of the larger absolute value and subtract. Okay, so let's look at the steps. Step one, I'm gonna change subtraction into addition by adding the opposite. Determine if you are adding or subtracting. Step two, line up your decimals. Fill in any blank spots to the right of a decimal with zero. Step three, add or subtract from right to left, column by column, borrow or carry when needed. And step four, place the decimal point in line with the other decimals. Determine if the answer is positive or negative. So you have previously done steps two through four, but now that we're adding in the negatives, step one has been added where we're gonna um, look at them and see are we adding or are we subtracting, okay? So let's look at an example. Here I have negative 98.7 and I also have positive 43.87. So I like to label them. So here I put an N for negative and a P for positive. So I have a negative plus positive. And the reason why I reviewed the integer rules is so that I know if I'm gonna be adding or subtracting and if my answer is gonna be positive or negative. So if I have a negative plus a positive, I'm going to use the sign of the larger absolute value and subtract. Well, when I compare the larger absolute value, 98.7 is greater than 43.87. So that tells me my answer is going to be negative. And I'm also going to subtract the two numbers. So here I line up my decimals. So I take 98.7 minus 43.87 and I'm going to fill in my uh, zero and then I'm going to subtract just like you have learned before previously. I can't uh, zero minus seven I can't so I need to borrow. This becomes six and now I have ten minus seven this is three. I can't do six minus eight so I'm going to come over here and borrow. This becomes seven. Now this is sixteen minus eight which will give me eight. 7 minus 3, that will give me 4, and 9 minus 4 will give me 5. My next step is to bring down my decimal. And then lastly, I am going to ask myself, is it positive or negative? And earlier I stated that I'm going to use the sign of the larger absolute value. The sign of the larger absolute value is negative. Therefore, that means that my answer is going to be negative. So negative 54.83. Okay, let's look at another example. Here I have negative 145.68 minus 12.96. Now this is a subtraction problem, but I can change it into an addition problem by adding the opposite. So here I'm going to add the opposite. And so now I have negative 145.68 plus negative 12.96. So I like to box my numbers. So again, here's negative 145.68 and I'm gonna box my negative 12.96. So I can see that this is my addition problem. I'm gonna label above, it's a negative plus a negative. So if I use my integer rules, I know that my outcome is going to be negative and I'm going to add the two numbers together. All right, so I line up my two numbers and I have 145.68 plus 12.96. Eight plus six will give me 14. One plus six plus nine will give me 16. One plus five plus two, that will give me eight. 
4 plus 1 is 5, and then 1 plus 0 is 1. I will bring down my decimal, and I have 158.64. And then I ask myself again, is it positive or negative? Well, I um, earlier wrote negative because again, a negative plus a negative equals negative. So that tells me my answer is going to be negative. And so my answer is negative 158.64. Okay, so now we're on your turn number one. You can pause the video and do the problem on your own and then unpause the video to check your work. Okay, so go ahead and hit pause. Okay, so for this problem, I have 56.2 minus 123.63. Now this is another subtraction problem, so I'm gonna change it into an addition problem by adding the opposite. So you can see here, I added the opposite. I'm going to box my numbers, 56.2, and I'm going to box my negative 123.68. So I can see that this is the addition problem of a positive plus a negative. Okay, and I know when I'm dealing with a positive plus a negative, I'm going to use the sign of the larger absolute value and subtract. So that I'm going to go ahead and line it up to subtract. So here I have 123.63 minus 56.2. And I lined up my decimals. I'm going to fill in the zero. And now I'm going to subtract. 3 minus uh, zero will give me 3. 6 minus 2 will give me 4. I can't do 3 minus 6, so I'm going to borrow. So this is going to become 1. This becomes 13. 13 minus 6 will give me 7. I can't do 1 minus 5, so I'm going to borrow. This becomes 0, and this becomes 11. 11 minus 5 will give me 6. I'm going to bring down my decimal, and I get 67.43. And then lastly, I ask myself, is it positive or is it negative? And here it says, use the sign of the larger absolute value. Well, the larger absolute value is 123.63, which was a negative. So that tells me my answer is going to be negative. So I'm going to write negative 67.43. All right, let's look at your turn number two. You can go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so here I have negative 98.61 minus 34.781. It's another subtraction problem that I am going to turn into addition by adding the opposite. Okay, and then I like to box my numbers so I can see what I have. Here I have negative 98.61, and here I have negative 34.781. So I have a negative plus another negative. Okay, and when I have a negative plus a negative, my answer is going to be negative, and I'm going to add. So I'm going to line them up and add my two numbers. So here I have 34.781 plus 98.61, and I'm going to add my zero. Okay, one plus zero is one. Eight plus one will give me nine. Seven plus six will give me 13. One plus four plus eight will give me 13. And one plus three plus nine will give me 13. I'm gonna bring down my decimal and then lastly, again, I ask myself, is it positive or negative? And I know that the answer is going to be negative. So my answer is negative 133.391. Okay, so let's look at your turn number three. Go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so here I have negative 25.94 minus negative 80.7. So since I have a subtraction problem, I'm going to turn it into an addition by adding the opposite. So here it becomes addition, and now my negative 80.7 becomes positive. So I'm gonna box my numbers, negative 25.94, and I have positive 80.7. So above them, I'm gonna put a negative plus positive. I look at my integer rules, and I know that I'm going to use the sign of the larger absolute value and subtract. So I'm gonna line them up and subtract. 
So 80.7 minus 25.94, I'm gonna fill in my zero. I can't do zero minus four, so I need to borrow. So this seven becomes a six, and now this zero becomes 10. 10 minus four will give me six. Six minus nine, I can't, I need to borrow. I can't borrow from the zero, so I come over here. This becomes seven, this becomes nine, and now I have 16. 16 minus nine, that will give me seven. Nine minus five, that will give me four. And seven minus two, that will give me five. I'm gonna bring down the decimal, and I get 54.76, okay? Now, again, last step, I need to ask myself, is it positive or negative? So I come back here and it says, use the sign of the larger absolute value. Well, the larger absolute value is 80.7. 80.7 is positive. So that tells me my answer is gonna be positive. So I get 54.76. And that is it.